All right, what's going on, everybody? I just want to give a quick apology in advance. Uh, I live near a road, so sometimes the cars going by can get kind of noisy. But hopefully, you can hear me throughout this video. Um, just want to do a quick video on my Quest Angler 10 foot boat. It's that time of year again in Oregon here. The sun's coming out, pretty sure, across uh, most of the country, hopefully. Um, so, everybody's getting boats out, um, you know, just getting outdoors and enjoying the sun while it's here here in Oregon we get like three months of sun and you know that's that's kind of it it's kind of rain for most of the year and I'm saying you can't take the boat out in the rain but who wants to do that anyways uh, I just pulled this boat out. I bought it last year uh, it's a quest angler 10 foot boat I bought it last year at the very end of the summer so I didn't get a good chance to I didn't get a chance at all to take it out so I figured while it was in storage I would work on it uh, modified a bit I've seen a lot of like YouTube videos and you know like online forums and posts where people just made these things pretty unique so this is what I came up with so I'll be taking it out for the first time this year uh, pretty dusty right now so I've been cleaning it up and, and buttoning things up that I've been kind of modifying and gonna go over this uh, go, gonna go over Kind of what I've done to the boat, maybe give someone else some ideas uh, what they could possibly do to theirs if they're thinking about picking one of these up. Sorry, it's a big truck going by. All right, so quickly, the reason why I bought this boat is one, boats are expensive, and I wanted to, you know, get into some more boat fishing. Um, tired of snagging up on the banks all the time and stuff like that, so I want to get some boat fishing for sort of an inexpensive cost now this isn't expensive but it's not super cheap based on what i've done to it um i didn't spend a ton of money but you know it adds up quick as you're uh buying little things you want stuff like that so i still got the sticker on here so let's take a look at what this is sideways this is a quest angler 10 foot three inch boat um fishing boat's a two-person boat and there's a little bit about it uh, I've heard these are super super stable so that was one of the main reasons that you have to do my research I wanted to uh, buy this boat also the cost so I was looking at the an eight foot and I was like you know I wanted it wasn't just for me you know bring my son on it with me as well um, and I was like okay the 10 foot seems to be the preferred kind of length when I you know kind of checking out what people were interested in and what they use these boats for uh so i went with the 10 foot um if i remember correctly it was i want to say 6.99 or 7.99 on dick sporting goods and um i had a coupon for uh, i think like 20 percent off i don't know i think i ended up paying around 600 dollars or so uh plain i'll put a picture up of what it looked like when i first bought it kind of plain um so you can kind of see what I've done. But anyways, let's start here at the back. Tired of me rambling. So, all right, so I did pick up a Mercury three and a half horsepower motor. Um, they sell a kit, and I have since I haven't taken it out yet, I haven't bought the kit. Um, that upgrades it to a five horsepower thing. It's just a carb and a prop. So this one, shadow out of the way. This prop is, it's a plastic, it's a polymer. So, the upgraded prop that comes with the uh, five horsepower upgrade kit is supposed to be aluminum prop, um, and that deals with a lot of, you know, from what I read, flex and different things like that. So, yep, I went with the Mercury three and a half horsepower motor. Um, There's quite a bit I did, so let me try to get my train of thought going here. Um, great reviews on the Mercury three and a half. Uh, seems like a solid solid motor for these boats somewhere in the description of this this boat there was a limit on what they suggested what the manufacturer suggested as far as the largest outboard you should put on it and i think three and a half to four maybe five was the largest that the manufacturer suggested so there's a limit for that and as well as the maximum capacity right there it says two persons or 500 pounds um but i have read of people exceeding that and still having a pretty stable boat all right so we got the mercury three and a half um 
can't wait to get and test that out. Then I went with the Newport Vessels. Now this is where I got kind of creative. Uh, Newport Vessels battery box. And let me see if I can get this out of here. So got a Newport Vessels battery box. And as this battery box is pretty unique because it has a, you know, it's like cigarette lighter port. Uh, not really cigarette lighter, I guess for a, uh, what do you call those dang things? Um, car charging port or whatever. Some some devices use those car charging ports. You can stick in there. There is, um, I'm going to the other side. And I'll link all this stuff in the description. We got a, a USB, USB port here. Um, and see what else we got. We got our fuses. A little breaker, a little breaker box there, a little breaker panel. So this is where it gets unique. I also went with the Duralast Marine uh, 27. Let's see if we can get some information there. And that runs all the electronics on board. And I'll kind of go over what electronics I'm with. But I got custom and I went online on Amazon. Most of this stuff is on Amazon. Let's see if we can see it here. This chair in my way. Ooh, I want this chair. All right. So this piece right here is, quick let me show you up here, I added a radio to this. So here's a radio box and got a radio there. And there's a kind of radio uh, case I went with. I found that on Amazon. So I did this first, I did the radio first. Uh, and then as I was trying to figure out how I wanted to upgrade this battery box here, I uh, went back on Amazon I was like, okay, I think that that uh, case that I used for my radio would fit actually on this battery box because it was plain. So I did, and I ended up screwing it in, and you can kind of see how far the little screws I went, how far they come out, right there. So I screwed it into the the battery box, and then I went on Amazon and ordered this this little kit here. It's kind of like the switchboard, and it's not, it's only blinking on the video. It's not blinking in uh in person but it's by this brand nylite or nylite whatever it has its usb ports here there you go there 12 volt there um and so what this does is it gave me all these options here to be able to control the boat so i got my stereo here so as you can see the radio's off well kind of see it's kind of a glare so when i come back here and i flip that on see it illuminates red and we come back and we can see that the radio's on all right so we got the little stern light off amazon again as well flick that stern light on and there you go that flicks Let's see if i can get it to focus there we go so on and off there uh and here is gps this is my gps slash my little Garmin unit haven't used it but if we turn it on here there see if it pops on here well, let's see we got oh, power button let's hold some power what do we there we go have to hold the power button and it's we got a pretty good glare out here but it's coming on there we go so this is the fish finder and as I talk about the things that I've done in this boat it's kind of I'm jumping all over the place because they all kind of like work with each other so there's my GPS fish finder there and um, all that and I have that routed back here let me go actually around to the other side so you can see how I have this routed there we go. I'm gonna zoom in there. So we see you got that routed from the GPS. And move out of the way there. I use these little screws and these little clips to route it all the way back under the battery box. Now the boat came with, zoom back out. The boat came with, um, uh, where is it up front? Once again, all over the place. The boat came with, let's see if I can out of here this plug-in here 
and I have it connected to my trolling motor, but it came with this plug-in and a little socket there. All right, so it came with that and that runs all the way back. I think that's the only thing the bolt came with. It was pretty plain and it runs back and it comes out of here and it goes to the battery. So I ended up wiring it into my battery box um, and it's for trolling motors and such. So I didn't have to do any wiring like that. All the rest of the wiring is under this deck I built. So once again, all over the place. Um, so back to the radio. There we go, see what we can see. So under here, there's some speakers. So these rod holders came where these speakers are. Those rod holders, when I bought the boat, were there. I pulled the rod holders out and installed some little pretty and expensive marine speakers um, there. Uh, just, you know, it kind of protects it, having it under this deck I built. And um, then I just re-drilled a hole back into the deck and put the rod holder up here so that I can sit my rod in there for the person who's sitting up front with this seat, like that. So I got the speakers under there. And I was like, you know, and I got my little, I don't know what that cord's for. I got my little uh, aux cord there um, so I can listen to some tunes off my phone, but I can't do it while I'm recording. Uh, but I also wanted the radio too, so went on Amazon again and found a radio antenna. There we go, see if we install that there. So I just screwed it into there and ran it back under. There's some wires, I gotta figure out a way to hide those so they're not exposed. So then I just pop my antenna up like that. See it just pops up like that, it lays right in there and it just pops up like that. Let's see if we can find a station. And then I mounted my Mercy uh, fire extinguisher on board because I have electronics and an outboard on here. So, see if we can find a station real quick while this is a, yes. My battery had died while I was in storage, right? I, I took it out, but, um, so nothing's set. Let me just not set anything. I just wanna source it to a tuner. And the sound is decent. The sound is pretty decent. Um, let's find just a radio station, nothing. Got a captain's chair there. It is, I, I mean it, I, I guess they're pretty stable. I heard they're pretty stable. So it doesn't move around a lot. I mean, they come in and out of the boat pretty easily. If I wanted to, you know, lift this out of here, it's got some weight on it, but it does come out of the boat here. But I left the other seat in one cost, two. I like having one seat smaller than the other one. Um, this deck here was intended to stand up on, so I didn't really care if this seat was um, like kind of short right here, because you can always turn around and put your feet down there or stand up here and do some fishing from the deck. Also, you know, this is nice to just pop this out. I got it clipped down here onto this little ring. So I can, how did I clip this in here? There we go. So we can also pop this out. There we go. Pop this out for now. Now, if I'm fishing by myself, it's just, you know, a one person vessel there. Um, you know, so there was two of those rod holders. And the second one, I just kind of drilled right into the side of the boat because these cup holders, I think they're cup holders. They don't hold any cups. Like anything will fall over right there. So I don't really have a huge use for that yet. I may put another cup holder in and drill in and put it deeper so it can fit. As of now, I don't have any cup holders, uh, but it's kind of an idea. But I did put the rod holder right here and then I put the GPS on that side there in the fish finder. And it kind of works out pretty well like that. So I got both the rods and this one be would be for the captain here or if you're by yourself or whatever to kind of have quick access to the rod holder and for the person up front, I put the rod holder up front. All right, oh, still lots to go over and I kind of lost my train of thought. The deck, I built this out of uh, plywood, or OSB, OSB, I built it out of OSB, that's right, and waterproofed it uh, with some waterproofer 
uh, and sealed it and all that type of stuff. And then covered it in some, I think this is like a carpet I found at Home Depot. Um, a little rug. I can't remember the exact dimensions of the rug, but I just cut it down to size. And then I took some more OSB, I want to say inch thick. I think I went with an inch thick um, or close to it and use that for my deck. And it, it's pretty stable. I've stood up here multiple times and there's really no flex. I built some support beams, kind of two by fours here and there. And it kind of all flows together. Like I just, I like the way that looks. Everything just flows together and it's very stable. And then I built this hatch. Let me move this out of the way here. I built this hatch so that I'm able to access my trolling motor to uh, remove it and put it on, tighten it, do anything I need, and maybe a little storage compartment down here uh, just with some hinges, kind of like some hinges there, and just cut it to fit. And when it closes, you know, it closes right down. So once again, the trolling motor plugs right in here, under there, and boom, we're good to go on that. So once that's installed, I can still adjust it if I need to, but it just fits perfectly. Now I went with a Newport Vessels 55 thrust trolling motor and a Helmsmate tiller handle. There. This is a kayak uh, trolling motor based on the size, just how short it is. Cause it is a small boat, so I didn't really feel like I needed a, a um, a large trolling motor and it adjusts here just for height pitch and all that type of stuff so get over here if I uh, turn it let me see I can turn it there let me see one second let me lift it so I raise the motor here got a directional lock there and height adjustment I think it says it on there but this is how you adjust the height with this one here uh, but I can turn it around in that way either if I'm by myself or someone's with me we'll go ahead and adjust it down that way the person in that other chair sitting up here or me or whoever can control can control it from the front and troll around so super excited to try the trolling motor super excited to try that the whole thing the Merc three and a half but um, I heard the Mercs weren't super powerful but I'm pushing a small boat and I'm not looking to race or anything so it seems to be perfect for the size of the boat but here we have the other end of my GPS fish finder so I went with some Scotty mounts kind of throughout the whole thing that I was uh, mounting little pieces here and there Scotty seems to be the brand everyone's going with so here, we just twist that handle and loosen it. And that way, we can drop this down and then we can retighten it. Make sure everything tightens up. And that can extend. Here it extends with these two. I just loosen these, one and two there. It'll extend further down into the water, but that's how it looks. Side of the boat. You know, and then I can control it or view it and all that good stuff from the Garmin back here. And that kind of sits in the center of the boat like that. So when I'm sitting here, I can look down and control. If I turn this around here, I can control. And I might buy another uh, extension for the outboard. But anyways, I can sit here kind of in this little center piece little center area view my fish finder control the boats all kind of right there for you um so yep that's how that goes and it looks pretty good on everything looks like it flows nice and beautiful there all right next thing you gotta have your backup emergency paddles here uh, i think not 100 sure but i maybe scotty mounts maybe some other amazon mounts but i'll find it and link it but basically i just drilled these into the side here and here let me go ahead and pull it off so drill those right into the side and then seal them with some uh, uh some sort of silicone based you know sealant to anything i drilled i kind of sealed so we won't have any leakage it's all foam inside of here there it is the quest and some amazon paddles right there 
emergency paddles and they just fit right on the right on the side there nice and perfectly yeah, like that and we got another one over there so I am using a this is a sterling trailer I bought off from Lowe's just a four by eight uh, kind of build your build it yourself type trailer um, and I read that they work perfectly for these boats and it definitely fits perfectly I have some Rhino transom uh, straps here that I used for the handles and just right there hold it to the trailer and then some ratchet straps up front now what else we got going on here let's see wonder if I'm missing anything kind of more of a walk around of it there we go so don't know if I'm missing anything ah let's go over back to the other side I think I see something kind of little small personal things but oh look it's dusty down I was doing some work in here and cutting to the board and kind of threw shavings in there but anyways got a little fold foldable net like that there we go a little foldable net handheld net gotta have a net on board and here I keep tucked under here right in there's a nice little storage space but we have this little once again I'll find the exact weight but it's my little little anchor there we go in case you got an anchor down and it seems to be the perfect size for this boat and the weight and everything so nice little anchor and it just goes right in that bag right in that bag and if I clean this out tucks right in there yeah, tucks right in there a little floaty on it that can tuck in there as well a little storage and my little cord and this That kind of folds right back down, right into this little crevice. So I tried to find a use for most of this boat. All these little divots and stuff, I'll probably have some tackle and all that type of stuff in there. Um, a bait box and stuff if I'm by myself or with someone else, kind of just go right there in the center. Uh, maybe thinking of either I'm going to string, have a stringer hanging off the side or sort of a live well here in the middle. Um, what else we got going on? Got your backup gas can. Fits perfectly in between the mercury and this battery box. Uh, so no movement there, everything's nice and, well, this is empty right now, but when there's fuel in it, it's nice and tight. I got two more, and there you can get your battery reading at 12 and a half. So good battery reading. And with this, you can trickle charge it either directly off the post when not using, or you can attach a trickle charger here, the uh, clamps or little rings, and have it always on so you can just plug the trickle charger in, which I don't have that up in, uh, attached right now, but you just plug the trickle charger in and charge it up just like that. But yeah, I got two more options because there's five, five terminals here. So two more options. Uh, we can turn the stereo off for now, and I'm gonna turn the GPS off for now, but I haven't figured out what I'm gonna use those two for yet. We'll figure out something so five seems to be a good amount they have some that had more than five and less than five two and three and all of it was fairly all of it was fairly inexpensive so yeah i mean i love the radio my favorite part about this boat here and i'm super excited to get out is honestly the way i fabbed up this radio it just it, it like it, it just fits and it's nice and centered and it you know it just makes it really feel like a like a nice little boat so if anybody has any questions about anything, maybe I missed something that I've been kind of walking around here and didn't go over, but um, just feel free to ask in the comments or shoot me a message. But yeah, a nice little boat here. We're gonna throw that one right in there. You know, so then got the two rods. Yep. I haven't done the whole calculations on what the total cost was, but if you're looking at just for the, I guess the most expensive part, I think the Mercury three and a half, I bought a brand new off uh, online outboards 
about a grand for that about 600 or so for the boat itself which i've seen people take these boats out with nothing on it but the two chairs that come with and they have a great time so you don't need to do all this type of stuff to it but if you want to kind of you know customize it a bit and make it yours you know there's lots of options out there so i believe 200 bucks for the trolling the newport vessels trolling motor uh, 55 pound off amazon again um so i'm thinking about 600 bucks for the four by eight and i still got to throw a two by uh, a four by eight piece of plywood and finish the trailer so those are like the biggest cost and, and i can't remember that garmin but i'll link it got it off amazon again but the garmin and the battery are probably the secondary cost second to most expensive cost of this but it'll get you in the water how it is from the factory i did have to uh, register this boat because it is because i did add an outboard so with adding an outboard you do have to register here in oregon um yeah plan on maybe throwing some leds here kind of maybe along there get some nice uh lighting on the floor there more for aesthetics nothing really needed so yep go ahead and hit me up if you got any questions on it and Hope you enjoyed the video, and there's another shot for you. My goat in the background. All right, till next time, y'all. Peace.